Hey, 4 by E fans, about in the garage time for a little project, and we're going to work on the, um, well, it's not here. So uh, that's really what this video is about. I'm sitting with an empty garage bay where my Wrangler 4 by E normally sits, and this video, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be negative. Uh, hear me when I say that. I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic about things, but one of the things that has occurred in the, the past three plus years that I've had my regular 4xe is there have been quite a few times that this side of the garage is sitting empty and that's because the Jeep is sitting in the shop where it is right now getting a new hood, four new doors, and a new tailgate. Um, I, you know, in the time I've had it, and I, I've said this in a previous video, I've had the coolant pump A go by bad twice. I've had the electric coolant heater go bad. I had the front steering stabilizer go bad. And just ended up replacing that with aftermarket stuff. Um, just little issues here and there, recalls. Uh, the hybrid battery has been replaced. And um, it's just been in the shop a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm being real about it, not being negative about it. It's just the reality of the situation. My wife has a 2019 Honda CRV, and I think Jeep needs to recruit some people from Honda. We have um, what's sitting in our driveway. We have a 2013 uh, Honda Insight, and my son has a uh, Cooper Countryman, and I have a Ford Transit minivan. This Jeep that's not here has spent more time in the shop, and by the way, it's newer than all of those vehicles. The uh, the the Ford is a 2015, or uh, yeah, 2016. The Countryman is a 2018. This is a 2019, and the 2013 Honda Insight. And my 2021 Jeep Wrangler has spent more time in the shop than all of those vehicles combined. I say this, as a plea uh, to Jeep, we got to do something about the quality. Now, I know it's a Wrangler, and it's actually comical if you're in Jeep groups, like non 4 e related Jeep groups, just regular Jeep groups. A lot of people have just come to accept that they're not going to get a quality product, that it's going to be in the shop, that it's going to need repairs. And I just I think in 2024, that's not necessary. Uh, in fact, it's a failure of leadership, I would have to say, in some way, shape, or form, that we have just come to accept that, eh, you're going to have electrical issues, eh, your check engine light's going to be on, eh, you're going to have this, oh, you're going to have that. And, um, you know, in the 4 by E fans Facebook group, we know what the common issues are, I think, better than a lot of the dealerships do, because... We know when somebody says, hey, my Jeep's doing this, there's several of us that are like, hey, here's your problem. And they take it to the dealership and they give them other things and don't do the repairs the way they're supposed to. And then they bring it back home, the problem comes back, they have to go back and then they fix it and do exactly what we were saying in the beginning. So I, I don't know, it's just something in me is, is frustrated by that, that we have just come to accept that these are gonna be problems and, um, I don't know. I just don't think it's acceptable the amount of time that this side of the garage has sat empty. You know, it's going into a weekend. That's when I drive my Jeep the most. And now my wife and I are going to try to figure out ways to share this car over the weekend. And we don't always go to the same place at the same times all the time. So it is an inconvenience. It is an annoyance. I'm glad that this Jeep is not my daily driver and that I do have a company vehicle. But um, it, it's just frustrating. I, I, you know, I've had two trips that I wanted to take with my Jeep, that I had to just say, well, we'll just take the CRV instead. And that's disappointing when you think about it. And I had some things I wanted to do this weekend to the Jeep. I have some parts over here in a box that I wanted to put on, can't do it now. And so might, might have to wait till next week to do that. I just, I'm hoping this video gets to somebody at Jeep and you listen to the customers. And there are a lot of people that are way less patient than I am. I mean, I'm, I'm just patient because I love my Jeep, but there are some people, and I don't blame them for not being patient. Let me tell you, there are some people that have just gotten so frustrated, they're like, forget this, I'm selling this thing and I'm done with it. And I'm going on to, you know, something else. 
And I think Jeep needs to listen. I think Jeep needs to step it up and do what it takes to make sure the parts suppliers have their quality up. Because I, honestly, a lot of the issues that my Jeep has faced has been from parts supplied by other parts suppliers. And that's just, that's something that Jeep needs to be uh, addressing. You know, the, it, the onus is on them to make sure that the parts that they are putting in their vehicles are quality and not just accepting whatever's happening. So Jeep, please listen to those of us that are speaking kindly and respectfully and asking to get the quality up. And uh, you know, as in the next few years or things are going electric and Jeep is going into a whole new world, I, I really feel like some attention needs to be given to making sure these parts are quality and that the vehicles are quality. Because on the tail end of that, I heard uh, my dealership told me that they're putting $8,000 into the doors and hood. And I don't know if that includes the tailgate, if that was just the doors and hood. I don't know. $8,000 they're putting into that thing. They just dropped a battery in it that was, who knows what the real price of it is. It's $14,000, $19,000 in the Mopar catalog, but I don't really think that's the real price because the 17.5 kilowatt hour battery, it just... I just can't imagine it's that much. But even if it's $5,000, you know, that's a lot of money. There's no way Jeep has made money off of my Jeep. You know, from an accounting perspective, my wife's an accountant. She said a few weeks ago, she goes, there is no way they have made money on your Jeep. There's, I mean, with all the car rentals, I mean, last car rental was 550 bucks. I didn't even ask for a rental this time, although I should have because the Jeep is undrivable. You know, I I probably had over well over two thousand. Oh gosh, no, I had way more than that. I don't know. I've had thousands of dollars in car rentals, and and that's not including the the coolant heater and the the pumps and all the other little things they've had to do. So, I, I just I think Jeep needs to look at these things and take these things seriously because, you know, there are a lot of people that are first time Jeep owners in the four by e community. And I don't think the retention rate is going to be great just based on the experiences that people have had. And it's not just a four by E thing. I mean, this is, you know, Wranglers have this issue, you know, these kind of issues all over the place. If you're in any kind of Jeep groups, you see that. So I think it's time for Jeep to listen and really buckle down and look at some of these things, you know, and <laughs> your price tags are through the roof, but that's a whole different discussion for another day. But, um, you know, if, if the price was high and the quality was high, that would be awesome. But when you've got a high price and a low quality, what are we doing here? I, th I think we can do better. Thanks for watching. Take care.